Hello, I'm Brian Nealon. And I'm Nicole <clears throat> Mermet. And we're here for Central Television at Hoval High. We hope you enjoyed the live broadcast of Baccalaureate from the High School Auditorium. Our show will include a band made up of Hoval students, seniors talking about their experiences at KYW Radio, a student council swap with Manville, and a look at what the construction class has accomplished over the years. Also, there will be a look at favorite shows and cartoons from both the high school and Tollgate Grammar School students, a look at the high school's first annual World Hunger Awareness Day, students using four-wheeling as a form of recreation, and a look at some of the areas in need of repair at Hoval. Also, we will be hearing some student commentaries. And now for our CTV production, made by Period 3 TV programming class. Improvisation is a key element in any musician's vocabulary. Some instrumentalists deal almost entirely with music that is created using improvisation. Senior Tim Coleman will introduce the members of an improvisational fusion group, a band with virtually no pre-written music. Hi, uh, this is Hype Rice. My name is Tim. I'm the guitar player and uh, part of the rhythm section, I guess. And uh, to my left is Josh Kosas, the uh, wondrous bass player. <laughs> And uh, we have on the one drum set, Sam Chopsticks Byard. He has a dog named Ping Pong and he doesn't like me. On the other drum set, we have Sheephead, Steve Riley. And our virtuoso reed player, Dan. Dan. We'll hear a performance by the band at the end of the show. There are a lot of interesting fields connected to a class like TV programming. That's true. In fact, Sina Fedorchek and Christine Ennis took this course last semester and got involved in a very exciting project. They traveled to Philadelphia and trained as radio broadcasters on KYW Radio. Chris and Sina were given 40 seconds of airtime of their own. Let's join Bill Maggi with Chris and Sina. Hi, I'm Phil Mackey, and I'm here with Sina Fedorchek and Christine Ennis. Recently, Sina and Christine took part in a program for high school students sponsored by KYW News Radio in Philadelphia. Um, how did you get to go to the news radio show? Um, well, last semester we took the um, TV course, and Mr. Dillon asked us if we would like to go, and we said yes, and then we took the train down to Philadelphia. Okay, tell us about what you got to do there. Well, we. Uh we learned how to like put out a broadcast over the radio, learned how to write one, like what should be in it, what shouldn't be in it, like the necessary stuff. We had a teacher there too. So. Did you get to actually go over the radio? Oh yeah. We got 40 seconds air time, <laughs> which isn't that long, but like it took us a while to put out like the 40 seconds of it. Okay. Did you like the fact that it was your voice and not your picture going over the air? Yeah, yeah. it was a little easier that way. I, it wasn't that bad. <coughs> we thought we were going to be a little more nervous, but the people were really nice. And uh, it only took us, like, once we got it down, it only took us a few seconds to, like, deal with the equipment and stuff. Okay. So. Uh, do you think that this work was interesting enough for you to consider doing it for a living? Yeah, I would do it for a living. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, all the people were very nice. It, it was a, a neat environment. There was always something happening. Okay, uh, Christine, I understand that you won some prize for this. What'd you win, and why did you win it? Um, yeah, well, out of the uh, however many students there were, 10 students got uh, an award and $100 for 
be, I don't know, for just certain aspects of the program. And there was a graduation, and I received an award and $100. And that's about it. Okay, if KYW does this in the future, do you think students should go to this? Like, was it interesting enough, and was it fun? Yeah, definitely they should go. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot, and like the people there are all really nice, and it was great. Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of other high school students there too. So you got to meet people from all over, like New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So, hey, did you get to meet any famous people at the station? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to meet um, Errol Her Bailey from he's uh, MMR. Mm -hmm. He's like the main broadcaster on MMR. He was really nice too. We Great guy. Yeah, we came in one time when he was broadcasting and uh, he was asking us questions. Cena and I got right up into the front. We were like yelling things <laughs> into like the microphone. Yeah, it's he was awesome. really nice. Okay, well thanks a lot. I'm Bill Mackey and I'm here with CTV. That sounded like a lot of fun. It's also a great opportunity. I know Christine is thinking of doing this professionally now that she liked it so much on the um, radio station. Did she? Yeah. <laughs> um, um. I know Cena enjoyed it a lot too. You know, this class and she's a lot of students to this field and they're thinking of taking up, you know, different careers they wouldn't have thought of before. So. Yeah, this class was a lot of fun. Yeah. This making the show was too. Yeah, was making fun. the show yeah. was lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Tammy Thompson, a senior at Hoval, expresses the concerns of many people in the following commentary <laughs> on reckless driving. Driving a vehicle is a privilege that we earn. Being able to drive is for our benefit, but if we abuse it, it can become very dangerous. In today's lifestyle, driving makes our lives convenient. Some people take the privilege for granted. Driving fast or recklessly are two of the most common abuses of the privilege. Speed limits are set on all roads to assure safety to all commuters. Some people exceed the speed limits because they are late or in a hurry to get someplace. Other people speed for fun or because they don't have anything better to do. None is a valid reason for breaking the law. Many people occupy their time by racing cars at excessive speeds. After a certain point, a driver loses control of his vehicle. No matter how good a driver the person may be, the faster the vehicle is moving, the less control the person has over the vehicle. Reckless driving takes many lives of innocent bystanders. There are people who enjoy playing games with cars, such as tag, weaving in and out of other vehicles on the road, and cutting off other drivers. Driving dangerously is not only a threat to the person driving the car, but to other drivers, passengers, and even pedestrians that may be on the road at the time. Motor vehicle accidents claim a very large percentage of lives in this country. Instead of accepting the privilege of driving maturely and intelligently, there are people who don't drive with intelligence. Vehicles are very helpful in today's lifestyle, but if not used properly, vehicles can also be very dangerous. Uh, oh. Recently, how about student council leaders traveled to Manville High School to evaluate their student council? Later, Manville student council officers visited Hobart to evaluate our student council. While they were here, our video yearbook staff videotaped a discussion with President Allen S Allison Silk, Vice President Ann Cassano, and Publicity Chairperson Andrea Pontani, and Manville's President and Secretary. Let's watch. They would kind of laugh at it, maybe. I mean, that's the thing that we need with the schools. We need to get people interested so that they'll do it. Because if we present them with something, they'll just kind of laugh at it and act like it's not. Like with the uh, food, the Red Cross food drive last year, we had that, and I mean, I publicized like crazy for that. I mean, there were posters, the huge cans in the cafeterias, and the only food that basically came in was, was the stuff us. that we brought in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, people just did not bring anything in. I mean, maybe there was like 10 students, and I'm not exaggerating at all. I'm like dead serious that that's how many people brought stuff in. It was really pathetic. I mean, we announced, we put up posters, we told the teachers to tell their students, and it's just lack of motivation. And it's so hard to think of something to do. So, I mean, do you guys do anything in your school? Does your publicity chairperson do that? I mean, do you have we a publicity chairperson? No, we chairperson? don't have a publicity chairperson. We have chair, pe chair people for each activity, and they pretty much, from there, like, if there's, like, one activity, like the volleyball fund that we have, you have different committees, and there is a publicity committee. So there's not one set for the whole year. It's just different projects. But one thing we did last year that worked really good just as a one-day class competition to get students involved was it's called Silent Day. 
and um, the girls would be on Monday and the guys would be on Friday. And Monday, like the girls would wear these tags, like little red tags, like safety pin, and the guy would have to get the girl to talk all day. So in the end, wh whatever guy had the most like tags would get like some kind of a prize at the end of the day, and then Friday the girls would have to get the guys to talk. And it's really fun because like the guys would do like really crazy things to get the girl to talk and <laughs> the girls it's really easy to get guys to talk but um and it's just something that like students were interested in because I guess it was like with the opposite sex and it just you know <laughs> it was fun <laughs> and, and that worked really well people liked that a lot. So what do you think Cal? Have. Didn't that work <laughs> good? <laughs> I, that might work though. I think yeah. that would be really a lot of fun. I think I think a lot of this stuff would work yeah, it just has to be at the right time and it like it, it can't, if it's night period, it's not going to work. Well, it's all day long, right? right. We tried to but do I mean that, like something like that when thing. we were freshmen. Like, in, we had, like, the hug hall, and, like, oh, one of the halls right. was, oh, was yeah. go the and skip. stop or something. Yeah, yeah like, whenever, the whenever there would be, like, people from the executive board, like, in one of the halls, and, like, one hall would be the hug hall, one hall would be, like, the stop and go hall, or, and, like, or some one hall would be the skip Skipping hall. hall. And, like, they'd walk around, and they'd put up signs. And when they flash a sign, like everybody would hug like the person next to them, <laughs> and it just didn't, it didn't work, work out. It didn't work out at all. Like they put up a sign, and, like everybody would be like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> and like oh, walk by. So. <laughs> but like I think that's probably embarrassing because people were like, I don't know this person next to me, you know, you know, mm -hmm. like and people aren't gonna. Oh, skip. you know. <laughs> no, you know. Well, I wouldn't hug but somebody that I don't like. But if we had like people with pins, like as people were coming in the school for that thing, mm -hmm. I think. That's not embarrassing. Hoval Student Council received a Standards of Excellence Award as a result of the evaluation done by Manville High School. Our Student Council also contributed $2,000 to the state charity, the Rainbow Foundation. Three years ago, Mr. Kevin Kerwin, a woodshop teacher, started teaching Woods 3, also known as construction class. During these years, the group has taken on many projects for the school. One of the most complicated is the one you're about to see. Remember, these are students in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grades and not professional workers. Let's listen to Mr. Kerwin as he describes what is taking place. The students in the Woods 3 project this year have uh, built a garage. They, at this point, are laying the foundation for the garage. They poured the slab. They're setting up the corner blocks here with my help. They're mixing all the mortar and laying all the block that'll support the garage uh, down below the frost line. Here you see them setting the mortar on the block and building it up. They'll build the block up approximately 16 inches out of the ground to protect the wood structure. Um, once that is done, then they'll be able to start uh, putting the prefab structure that they've already built on top of it. Uh, here you can see them mortaring in block into the corners. They build up the corners first. And then a little later on in the process now, they've got the block all the way up out of the ground. They have stone in the center where the slab will be poured for the floor of the garage. And they're putting on the last of the L blocks. The L blocks will actually support the edges of the slab all the way around. And then the walls will sit up on them. The slab is a concrete um, pouring that'll be done last. And, and it'll be strong enough to support, you know, vehicles, things like this. Uh, they backfilled that whole trench you saw earlier by hand, as you see them now, backfilling in this area. And then they'll cover completely the, the inside area with stone, and it'll all be tamped down with a compactor. Uh, it's been a big job, and it was a lot harder of a job than they thought, but they did really great at it. Oh. Well, Brian, that really looks like a lot of fun and hard work, too. So, Brian, do you remember your favorite cartoon when you were in kindergarten? Yes, I do. It was Underdog. Mine was the Smurfs. Well, Brian and I were curious to see what is popular in the grammar schools these days. We went to Tollgate Grammar School in Pennington to see what kids like today. We also asked the same question here at Hobel to see if there really is a difference in taste between elementary school students and high school students. Let's see what's popular. Hi, we're here with Ariel, a senior at Hoval, and um, I'm going to ask you today, what is your favorite cartoon? I'd have to say the really, really old Walt Disney ones that they show in between Bugs Bunny cartoons. Okay, that's great. What's your favorite TV show? 
I don't have one. I don't watch TV all that much. Okay, what's your favorite sport? There's two of them, horseback riding and ice skating. Okay, and finally, what is your favorite movie of all time? Out of Africa. Thank you very much. What is your favorite cartoon? Uh, Looney Tunes. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. Who's your favorite character? Buster. That, that's Tiny Tunes. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite sport? Hockey. Hockey. What's your favorite hockey team? Uh, Red Wings. The Red Wings? What do you want to be when you grow up? Engineer. An engine. Whoa! I haven't heard yeah. that one. An engineer? Do you like math a lot and everything? No. Well, you need math to be an engineer. Hi, I'm here with Brian McCollum, a junior at Hoval, and today I want to ask you, what is your favorite cartoon? Oh, that's a tough one. I'd have to say Bugs Bunny, though. Okay. Okay, what is your favorite TV show? Northern Exposure. Okay, that's a great show. Okay, and Thank what you. is your favorite sport? Baseball. What is your favorite movie? Uh, that's another tough one. Wayne's World. Okay, thanks a lot. What's the difference between boogers and broccoli? I don't know. What's the difference? Because kids won't eat broccoli. Jim, what is your favorite cartoon? Uh, let's see. My favorite cartoon would be Tom and Jerry, but... The one thing I hate, I want to see like the little mouse get nailed more often. I like Looney Tunes. The Simpsons. Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace. Why do you like Dennis the Menace? Because he gets into trouble all the time. Um, the Chipmunks. Ah, Looney Tunes. Bugs Bunny. Garfield. Uh, I really don't have one, but I like Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. The Flintstones. <laughs> I like Dennis the Menace. Hi, I'm here with <laughs> Todd Fiorentina. Hi, Senior Hobel. Um, what? Hello, what's up? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite cartoon? Uh. You got a little you got a little lipstick on your teeth there. All right, my favorite cartoon uh, is Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> Where are you? Because I like the title. If you get what I'm saying. There you go. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, um, what about those cartoons? A lot of them are really popular still, even from like a long time ago. Yeah, I think Tiny Tunes definitely like stayed popular. I'm surprised how many kids still watch it. You know, Looney Tunes and Tiny Tunes. But Looney Tunes is a great cartoon. I you know. gotta love it. It's, it's timeless. Great. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy's coming. Ren and up Stimpy's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's it's definitely popular. Yeah. The kids are a lot of fun though. It was yeah, a lot the of fun. kids were great. Yeah, there isn't remarkably enough a big difference between I think high school and uh, the kindergarten as far car as far as cartoons. I think that. Yeah. Tim Col <laughs> Tim Coleman, a Hoval senior, will will be attending uh, will be attending NYU to major in music. <laughs> He has a few thoughts about the influence of jazz on today's popular music. Tim? From the beginning of the 20th century until its middle, jazz was the largest and most influential musical movement in American history. But for those who think jazz has made its mark and then dissipated into a memory should take a look at music today. The majority of rap sampling in these times has utilized cuts of jazz of all types. Bebop kings like Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker cool jazz in the style of Miles Davis, <coughs> and funk pioneers like Maceo Parker of James Brown's group. And horn players are not the only ones being sampled. Bass players' riffs are often used to set down the song's low end in rap. Without the diverse textures and flavors of jazz, many rap composers would have to resort to using the less diverse palette of rock sounds exclusively. Many musicians are also finding that accenting their music with aspects of jazz yields powerful and often ingenious results. Although these experimentalists do not combine equal, equal parts of jazz styling and rock power as did the innovative fusion pioneers of the late 60s and early 70s did, bands and singers from Living Color and Faith No More to Prince and En Vogue 
utilize this very ear catching effect. Jazz is not just your grandparents or even your parents' music. Many styles of music today echo more from that incredible era than is commonly thought. Jazz is everywhere, affecting more of music today anyway than rock, in a more subtle way, of course. After all, Thanks, Tim. Coming up next, we have footage of an event that happened here at the high school on April 16th, World Hunger Awareness Day. On this day, students were given the opportunity to experience what it would be like to eat as the people in the third world countries do. Let's look at some reactions to this day. Okay. Taping that was a lot of fun. I thought it was really interesting to see what the kids had to say about it. Yeah, they, they seemed to like understand the problems and stuff and they just sort of what? Um, do you think the students gain some insight into the problem of world hunger because of the um, activity uh, I believe so uh, thanks to the students in the honors program who made all the the posters and decorated the school and made students aware generally of what was going on. Those who ate the lunch definitely were impacted. Uh, uh, rice and water really was <laughs> not, a, not an appropriate lunch for most of them. Um, and I think they understood that the lottery uh, was exciting. It gave them a chance, an opportunity to, to, to really get something different. So all in all, there was some insight into the concept and I think some insight that people do go hungry every day. I think I, that was a plus. How does this make you feel knowing that people only eat this like one meal like their entire day? Well, it, it's really, it's kind of sad. It, it makes me feel that, I don't know, world hunger is really a problem. We should try to do something about it. And I think it's a good idea for this day. Um, I think it brings a lot of attention to the students um, who, who really don't know that there's a real big problem. And um, I feel real sad that a lot of people just eat rice, like really malnourished. And how does it make you feel knowing that people only eat this for an entire day? Well, the fact that they eat this, I don't know, it's kind of unfortunate. They should have, you know, more variety and things. But what I'm actually eating, I'm a lucky 25%, as you can see. Um, this is one of the healthier meals. Increasingly, we live on a... On a, on a planet and uh, on a, in a, an environment in a world which is increasingly becoming interdependent and we really all have to be concerned with uh, the human condition on our in this world whether we're living in a first world industrialized developed country uh, we need to be a little bit sensitive to that and look for ways uh, where all, mankind can you know solve some of the problem there are people in the world whose priorities our food. Ours are, we, we don't see food as a priority, yet it's probably one of the most important aspects of, of living. And that rice and water and rice and beans are not something that people really can fill their stomachs with each day and then go out and, and do what Americans tend to do. And hopefully that was the insight. I mean, that was the complaint that I heard from the students that we couldn't work all day on that. And they can realize that our society is so energy conscious that food is energy and therefore make that relationship. So I, I hope that they got that insight. It's probably a little too sophisticated, but in the long run, um, we will work to that goal. Excuse me, to that goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Sometimes I think we take a lot for granted. I agree. This is this is not quite Hopewell, but this is how many Hopewell Valley students spend their free time. Sean Davis and Tim Vanetta took their camera with them one time so we could enjoy the fun. <laughs> He's gonna hit it that bad? All right, this is a field ah. car that someone gave to us. A little bit of fun out in the field. Get some airborne jumping here. Here, Sean Davis and I were in the Pine Barrens down the shore. He uh, brought his four-wheel or the ATV down. We did some riding so people could see, you know, what exactly it entails. As you see here, he's just warming it up.
starting to get used to it again. Sean spinning some donuts just to play like he normally does. Doing some nice jumps. It's another jump. Here he's going to do a wheelie for us right down the field. Sinclair in the car and Sean Davis on the four-wheeler. The four-wheeling trend seems to be a bit dangerous, but that hasn't stopped a growing number of people from enjoying it. Brian, have you ever four-wheeled? I've tried once, but time and money kept me from really getting into it. It's, it's a popular hobby, though. You know, there are many high school students who are active as volunteers with the rescue squad and the fire department. That's true, and I really admire them. We have a commentary from Peter Swanson, a volunteer fireman, about their work. Peter? It all starts with the siren blowing them. No. <laughs> I don't blowing. It all starts with the siren blowing, calling them to duty. They're there 24 hours a day, ready and willing to help someone in need, and even save a life. They're the volunteer firemen and rescue squad workers. Volunteer is defined as one who enters into any service voluntarily, but being a volunteer is more than that, a whole lot more. It takes a very unique and compassionate person to become a volunteer fireman or rescue squad worker. Each fireman must complete a course consisting of 80 hours, and each rescue squad worker a course consisting of 120 hours of training. The training is vigorous, and its rewards is the personal satisfaction of being able to help someone in need. Volunteers put themselves in situations that few people want to be in, and give them themselves to help whoever is in need. One of the special rewards of being a volunteer is when the person being helped shows appreciation and gratitude through a simple smile. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think our senior panel is coming up next. Jim Clark hosted and he um, talked to some seniors about what they're doing next year. He interviewed Malaya Crawford, Kevin Beresford, Gretchen Saltzer, and Brian Beresford. Um, they talked about the plans that they have for next year, like what they're going to be doing and everything. Yeah, I think Brian Beresford is going overseas to another continent to help um, with some kind of Peace Corps work. What? Hi, this is Jim Clark, and we're at Hobo Valley Central High School with four seniors, and we're going to discuss senior plans with them. And with me are? I'm Kevin Beresford. I'm Malia Crawford. Gretchen Saltzer. I'm Brian Beresford. Okay, well, I, I'd like each one of you just to briefly discuss with the audience here what our plans are after graduation. I'd be happy, TJ. I'm going nice to Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado, where uh, I'll probably major in like liberal arts studies. I'm not really sure of my uh, plans as of yet. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I'll be studying um, mechanical engineering and maybe P linguistics as well. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, when I get my cosmetology license in June, I'm going to continue working in the same salon I work in now in Hopewell. Nice one. No comment on that much. I'm planning on uh, going to uh, Africa. It's sort of like a uh, Peace Corps thing. It's volunteer work there. It's not Peace Corps though. And, uh, All right, Brian. What about Africa? Interests <coughs> you, and, and you know, uh, just the uh, just experience the culture down there, and uh, what the people are like, and uh, it's a nice aid to uh, help get in college later on. What exactly will you be doing? Uh, building uh, shelters and whatnot, uh, helping them. Uh, f I guess uh, I'm not really sure the specifics. I've yet to go to Boston and talk to people later about it. Just like. Uh, you know, you make sure that they uh, get nutrition and uh, you know their nutritional needs and stuff like that, and help them out and stuff. Are, are you going and urbanizing 
almost. Are you going by yourself? Or is no, this is a planned uh, adventure with a group, and they have a, we'd be staying in like a dormitory, per se, makeshift dormitory, actually. Okay. Thank you. Gretchen. Uh, cosmetology. Explain. <laughs> what is it? The wonders of uh, cosmetology. The mystery. I've been interested in it ever since I was young, and I have no idea why, but I go to Mercer County Booth Tech for cosmetology, and I like it a lot, so that's what I'm going to do. A nice, <laughs> good attitude. You, you, you said you plan, to, you plan to work at a, uh, you're working at some uh, salon now. Right. Do you ever want to own your own? Um, someday I'd like to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice one. All right. Where, where are you thinking about locating this salon? Um, I'd like to go down south, like Florida or South Carolina. Oh, uh, so with all these old ladies. <laughs> 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 MIT, Malia. Wow, that's, that's pretty hard to get into, isn't it? <coughs> well, depends. Like, what, what, what about MIT, uh, you know, interested you? Um, I really like the people yeah. there a lot. And, of course, it's in Boston, which is a much bigger city than Titusville. And yeah. uh -huh. um, had a good engineering program, had a good linguistics program as well. I really liked it a lot. All right, engineering. Now, isn't that, like, a lot of work? <laughs> yeah. Did you say you have two, you're going to have two majors? Yeah, hopefully. Double major? Yeah. Wow. At MIT. <laughs> At MIT, no less. All right. Uh, Kep guy. Uh, Colorado. Uh, what, what is it about Colorado? Well, Jim, as you might know, uh, I've never actually been out of my time zone, and I've lived in Hobo all my life. So I figured a little diversity would do me good. And uh, I ski, and uh, Colorado's a very beautiful state, so I thought that'd be a good place to attend college. So it really had nothing to do with the school. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> well, the fact it's, a decent, it's a decent school in a, in a nice location, so I'm getting kind of like two educations for the price of one. Isn't that widely known as a party school, actually, Kevin? I don't know <laughs> that information, Jim. I, <laughs> I can look that up. I, I can look that up. Isn't it in fact that's what you told me you were going there, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> Drinking kegs? I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, uh, Brian, don't know Brian, Brian I, don't, I don't think you know Kevin as well as, as, well as you think. Okay. Kevin would never do anything like that. Right. I've never once seen Kevin go out on Friday night. He only, he only does homework. Yeah. Same with you, Jim. That's right. Never, never been a name. <laughs> we won't bring that one up, though, will we? All right, Brian. Jim, and what are All you right, playing? Uh, I'm not in this discussion, Jimmy, Brian. you by chance going to Penn State? Yes, I am, Brian. Still be dad. But it's not about me. It's about you, Brian. Nice one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Africa. Let's talk about Africa, Brian. <laughs> Why not? It's a continent, I think, Jim. Is it? Population, no, I'm not really sure. People are dying every second. Uh, are you planning to have any uh, resistances against diseases, like take shots or anything, or what? Well, I'm sure that'll be all taken care of the program, Jim. You think so? Yes. No malaria or nothing? No, I'm not quite worried about that. And so there's a large many cases of number of AIDS, as I was informed by Mr. Dillon before this uh, program started. So now I'm a little wary about that. A full body condom might actually be in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pricing them, checking them out. Yeah. Nice. Here. We'll make it come. Why not? All right. All right, Kev, back to you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so you like the Rocky Mountains, huh? That's the, I like the Rocky Mountains, Jim. Are you one of the wilderness, wilderness types that would like to climb these mountains? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd like to go hiking through them. I don't know about uh, mountain climbing specifically, but I definitely like to hike through the, uh, the Rocky Mountains. Uh, over my spring break, I actually went to Virginia and was actually hiking through the mountains. Oh, really? Why don't you go to Virginia? Um, the weren't western, you there, Jim? The western part. Oh, was it? Yeah. It was uh, George Washington State, actually, National Park. So you were actually just preparing for the mountains? Right, kind of a little taste of the mountains before I go away to Colorado. Well, that's our show. We hope you enjoyed watching what we've done as much as we enjoyed getting it, all, getting it together for you. Watch Graduation Aura and Falling Graduation, another Central Television production hosted by Joe Mannheim and Sandra Reisner. We'll close with the Fusion Band. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nicole Rimet. And I'm Brian Nealon.